Hey guys, on today's lesson we're going to be learning about blow-off valves. So here's an HKS super sequential blow-off valve. A blow-off valve is a lot like having sex with a gorgeous woman. Everything's going great, but you realize you were not meant to last. So what you need to do, you think of an old dirty man or woman or whatever does not float your boat and release the pressure. It's the same thing that this guy basically does. There's excess pressure built up in the turbo system that needs to be released before it damages the turbos and reduces your performance. Just like stock blow-off valves, the aftermarket units have the same basic mechanics. Boost pressure goes in through here, and this line connects to the upper intake manifold to tell it when it, the boost is no longer needed. A car like the Mazda RX-7 was already turbocharged by the manufacturer. So it's important to look for a blow-off valve first before trying to install anything or mess with anything on the car. A blow-off valve can be found on two sides of the intercooler, both the side that the turbochargers come from and the intake. On the 93 Mazda RX-7, you'll find it actually by the turbos, the more common location. If you're the law enforcement agent who decided to pull me over while I was doing burnouts, then yes, the blow-off valve is located where you said it is, in the exhaust pipe. The blow-off valve in the RX-7 is also called the air bypass valve, not to be confused with the charge relief valve back here. On the stock car, they both look the same, so be careful. See, if your car did not have one of these installed and it is turbocharged, here's what would happen. It's a lot like sticking your tongue in a fan blade. What happens is, it slows the blades down, hurts your tongue, and depending on how hard it is, actually will do irreparable damage. At low boost pressures, it just slows the turbochargers down and creates excess air pressure. As some of you guys may know, increased pressure actually increases the heat. So you're also doing damage in that sort of sense too. One of the most common questions I get is, can you put a blow-off valve on a non-turbocharged car? Surprisingly, the answer is yes. The problem, you've just spent two to four hundred dollars for something that's absolutely useless. It can be installed on a non-turbocharged car, but a non-turbocharged car never reaches pressure greater than the outside atmosphere. So first, you're never going to hear that sound. Secondly, it's never going to release excess pressure because there's no such thing in those sort of environments. At wide open throttle, which is the most that the car can take in air pressure wise, is actually the outside air. Otherwise, it's always at some form of a vacuum. So it really doesn't serve a purpose on a non-turbocharged car. One of the most interesting things about a blow-off valve is that the sound it makes is more or less a designer element. The basic concept of controlling the amount of boost pressure that is left in the system after you no longer need it is basically the same on every unit. The way it sounds is different based on design. 